Can we get started? Oh my god. Oh my god. Hey, welcome to the game again. We'll go fast because I know it's the bit it's the holidays, baby. You don't got time for this, right? I'm Captain Raz. And welcome to the Gaming Galleon. The pirate ship that is stacked to the gills with some of the greatest, I would venture to say many, of the greatest, and I guess I'd have to say venture the worst, video games from the past 40 to 50 years. That's a lot of plastic. Think about that, huh? And are there fewer things you want to see under the tree as a gamer than plastic? Come on! You know what I'm saying? Whether it be this, whether it be cartridges, whether it be just a little gift card for a digital download. That's what we're all banking for, right? You want to be nice. You want to be like, ah, oh, just get me whatever. It's, it's uh, I, you know, I'm just happy to be with everybody. Come on, make with the video games. What am I supposed to do all day while everyone's at church? Anyway, uh, 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 maybe, maybe I don't have the right spirit. Maybe I'm a little too worried about what's going to be under the tree rather than the people I get to spend it with. And maybe that's why the Christmas spirit has smited the ship and completely, completely <laughs> thrown this show for a loop. I had a big plan. It was going to be a magical, toy-filled Christmas adventure. We were going to be playing on the Dreamcast. Ugh. We were going to play playing on this guy. But we have, like, the worst capture card available for it. I'm not even sure it's a capture card. It looks like just a stick of gum with a couple of cords coming out of it. Okay? Inside, what do we have? Now, uh, something no one, no one is going to show you on Christmas. Nobody! I dug deep for this, guys. I went through... The Dreamcast demo discs for something I ordered months ago just for this show. Exclusive only to demo disc. Along with, uh, let's see, classics like F355 Challenge, Passion Rosa, Sega Marine Fishing, and Cow the Kangaroo. At the bottom of the list, there's toy. Tell me, tell me, tell me this isn't perfect. Toy Commander Holiday Edition. So not only are you piloting toys, little helicopters and little cars and little tanks through adorable to scale living rooms, kitchens bathrooms you're doing it in a house decorated for the holiday decorated for christmas wouldn't that have been perfect now look i try to do my homework when we do these shows okay we had a big christmas party last night places in a bit of a disarray i mean what do we got here we got a Freaking Bacardi bottle hanging in the mailbag. Come on. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, but even in that scenario where I knew I'd just be sitting on the ship with the other Yahoos, First Mate Bismuth, and Patty the Chef, even then I knew with all my years of putting together productions for you guys to always have a plan B. So I had the Dreamcast set up ready to go with just some kind of wacky arcadey game that one or two of us could compete in just in case things fell apart maybe someone was late you know yada yada okay things went off without a hitch now i put the cap get the capture card ready to go 10 minutes before the show why 10 minutes well you see with our capture card if you 
get it going too early, it will begin to lag and skip. And I'm sure you may have seen, if you've seen shows around here, you've seen one or two of those shows. They're floating around, and they're atrocious. Okay? Thank God I, for my smiling face. There'd be nothing to salvage from that show. Okay? So I was like, well, we're not gonna we're not gonna turn that capture card on until we absolutely necessarily need it. And boy did hell break loose. The navigator wasn't having it. Anytime I tried to connect the capture card to the Dreamcast, the entire navigator shut down! Lights were flickering. I had the crew banging on the door, wondering what the hell I'm doing in here. So what do you do? What do you do? You pack it up? No. No! You don't pack it up. You figure it out, right? So that's what we did. Look, we've got an awesome booty segment. Very Christmassy. We got the tree up. Okay? And of course we have a generously donated question from one of you lot out there for the end of the show. Okay, all that's all our ducks that are in the row there. No pun intended. What we don't have is a game. Or didn't. But I have a feeling this is a bit of a Christmas miracle for each and every one of you who are watching. And I think you'll feel that while it would have been sweet and appropriate and innocent to play Toy Commander Holiday Edition, I have a feeling that each and every one of you will be more than happy with what was left under the tree in its stead. So without further ado, let's hit the road. By the way, I, I just plugged in, I just, whatever system was in there, I put, wired it up, it's running, I popped the game in, here we are, without further ado, for the PlayStation 1, on this Yuletide season, Hooters! Road trip. This is what you've been fighting for, boys. Let's do it. All right. Uh, yeah, here she is. Miss America. Uh, I mean, arguably the... Uh, the easiest to swallow uh, load times ever. We're going to go... Is there a Christmassy one? No, we'll go with the Gemini. All right. Automatic, of course. Hooters Road Trip. What's the goal of Hooters Road Trip? Look, you're basically driving a car across the country. And if you happen to make it to the end of the, the track, you're greeted by the Hooters girls. Okay? And hopefully... Oh, let me give you guys some sound. Yeah, you got sound. All right, good. What, uh, what totally unlicensed music we're we playing today? I don't know, it sounds like some, I, I couldn't even guess what this, this music is supposed to be inspired by. I think, uh, I don't know where this is. Clearly this, this has got to be Vermont in, in January, right? Very Christmassy setting here. I'm all over the road. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's, uh, the horrible controls. Or, uh, you know, the, the me, deal, me trying to get that rum out of my system from last night. So you have to forgive me. Uh, yeah, but uh, what do we got? 51 seconds. We're in second place. We've got to qualify for fifth. I think we're going to manage it. Guys, I have no idea how long this race is going to be. Oh, my God! Okay. Apparently, <laughs> apparently it's okay. <laughs> To have a head-on collision with a dump truck in this game. It's a Christmas miracle. It's a Christmas miracle. I don't know what to tell Hey, get out of my way. Whoa, 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 hey. What, are you guys having a tailgate party? Come on. Second place. Oh. Bite your, bite your fingernails. Bite your loved one's fingernails. Can somebody bite the strings of this guitar? This is 
Oh boy. Oh, I. Uh, okay, look. Hey, look, guys! Is it? Oh, I thought it was snow. My mistake, it's not snow, it's just the ridiculous amount of fogging in the horizon of this game. I'm sorry. Sorry, you have to forgive me. Nope. Uh, 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 I'm losing it. Come on. It, 130 miles per hour. I had no idea it was this good of a driver. Who would have thought? We're going to find out that this race is like 50 minutes. Sorry guys, we had to we had to drop it. Thank you for joining us. We we ran out of time. We'll have you on it on the next uh, next voyage. Okay, thank you very much. Oh God, I can't stay steady with this thing. There we go. Okay, all right, we're close. Oh oh, finish and what's our reward? What do we get? Oh, we only we only got second. Hey there, welcome to Jack. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Appreciate that. All right. That's wonderful. <laughs> How many takes do you think it took her to get that one down? All right. Wonderful. Second place. Second place. All right. Let me get my hand. Try and get first next time. All right. We're going to get serious about it. Woo! Oh, my God. I'm still hot from that rum. Whew. It's Christmas parties, man. Look out. Keep an eye out for those. All right, let's hit that audio there. Did I get the harp? Come on, Raz. It's a way to do these things. For God's sake. It's tradition. It's Christmas. All right. You guys ready for some booty? Okay. I, I don't know if we're going to be like this show. But uh, I think we got enough in here to fill. Okay? It's not a massive lot. It's a few deals. And then the last thing, uh, I'm just like, it couldn't be more perfect for Christmas. Okay? Let's get started. Get this recording out of here. Alright. Thank you. Oh, my God. Okay. What do we got? Let's see. Total mismatch. I mean, this is everything from uh, the, the, the apex of gaming today to the birth, the dawn of console gaming, okay? And everything in between. Let's check it out. Where do we start? You guys want to see a serious oddity? This I totally overpaid for, but I don't think we're ever going to see anything like it again. I've I didn't even know it existed, okay? But I felt it was something we just had to share with you. It's a DS game complete that we paid a shocking, shocking $6 for. Plus tax. Found this at a Goodwill. It's Tony Hawk's Motion. Are you guys still awake? Why would I pick up a Tony Hawk game for $6? Alright, well, because it, it seems to have something... We've never seen before. I didn't even know existed. Okay? You'll notice it's Tony Hawk's motion. Now, if I were to guess when this came out, I would guess this came out at the time when uh, Tony Hawk's... Was it Skate? I don't even know what that thing was called. But the, Tony Hawk in the, the height of the Wii and motion peripheral era put out a skateboard with no wheels that you would put on the floor and then that's your controller okay apparently we did, he didn't learn from the rock and roller back in the nes days he tried to go with this it was a horrible flop and i have a feeling this was paired up right along with that game for all of the at that time current generation consoles but obviously there's not a little skateboard in here right no but there's still a way to play the game by moving the DS, as you can see on the back, it says twist, tilt, and turn, turn, turn. Well, I'm picking up a Minnesota accent to play. All right. How in God's name do they do that? I'll show you. So in addition to the game...
in the GBA slot of the game board, of the DS, you have the motion pack. So you pop this guy. There we go. We got a DS. We got a DS here. You pop the game into the back, like so. Then you got the GBA port, the Game Boy Advance port for backward compatibility generally. You pop the motion card in there, and oh my god! It's like I'm Tony Hawk! I bought this merely as, as an oddity for you guys. I could have certainly not used this in my life, and there's no way I'll ever see my money again for it, because absolutely no one wants it. But that's how much I care for you guys. And, incidentally, to soften the blow a little bit, to help me rationalize this ridiculous purchase, uh, apparently it has a second game right there featuring that little blue bipedal uh, dude named Hugh. And it says, uh, bonus game, Hugh Pixel Painter. Let's move on. All right. Uh, we uh, we have a, done, a, done a couple deals around here. Uh, there's this local joint we know, small town, pop, mom and pop kind of joint. They're beginning to realize all their stuff's overpriced. So they're starting to put it in a bin for three for a dollar. We got one little deal from them. In the bin, three for a dollar. We got ourselves a box for uh, that uh, you can plug an Atari uh, AV out, maybe, into, and then uh, coaxial out. That actually may be coaxial in. Very old. Uh, this is only just something to pair up with one of our old consoles, an Intellivision, maybe a Coleco. Maybe hook it up to an old TV one day. We have a couple of those floating around. Uh, game I've always passed on 10 million times. It's generally retails for about 4 bucks, 3 for a dollar here. We're getting it for 33 cents. I was happy with that. A nice, clean, complete copy of uh, Dai Senraiku? Dai Senraiku? Modern Military Tactics. Great uh, looking box art there. I'm all in on the box art. And uh, uh, frankly, I'm a big fan of these uh, this genre, uh, and I prefer military style uh, strategy RPGs. I don't know why. Uh, when you get really cutesy with them, cartoony like the uh, is it Tessegra? Am I uh, pronouncing mispronouncing that? There's a lot lot of strategy RPGs out there that are crazy cute. Uh, Final Fantasy Tactics. I admit I played all the way through, but uh, I like the I like gritty. You know, I like a gritty theme, so this one seems pretty cool. Uh, how many players? One to four players. That's pretty neat. I think that was on Xbox as well, original Xbox. And then finally, uh, the third game we got for a dollar, three for a dollar here, Anarchy Reign, a uh, Sega game we just didn't have. Again, a game you can generally find three, four dollars in a, a game store. Uh, too high for me. 33 cents. We'll do that all day. I believe the reason this was so cheap is it's primarily intended for online play. Uh, that doesn't mean single player mode here. Play as Jack or Leo in the two part story driven campaign mode with each character putting their own unique combat to the test. I believe this is an extremely over, top, over the top and ridiculous uh, arena fighter. Uh, third person perspective. Might be worth checking out. All right, but it's Sega. They they, they do over the top so well, so I've always kind of had my uh, thirty three cents. We'll do it, okay? Uh, me and Bismuth. Oh, here. Okay, let's do these. A couple of pawn shop deals. PS four games we just picked up a lot around the month, a couple months ago. They just slipped through the cracks. Haven't really fit in with the other stuff we've been showing lately. Now it's their time in the sun. Uh, sticks. Shards of Darkness, not an expensive game at all. Uh, pawn Shop, quite frankly, was inflating the price. Pawn Shops these days usually flat rate. PS4 games around $15. I 
Certainly not paying that. Uh, they're beginning to edge off on that a little bit. Uh, they were asking 10. We asked 5. They did 5. Uh, what strikes me about this game is, uh, you know, there's 10 million uh, one-player RPG kind of experiences like this, maybe with some stealth elements. Looks like a goblin assassin of sorts. However, uh, what uh, what made me interested about it is explore this huge, explore huge and master. Oh, explore and master huge open environments as sticks alone. Or in co-op with a friend. Now, I believe it's online only. But the game's extremely cheap. I have a feeling me and Patty the Chef wouldn't mind flipping through this one. So, uh, I picked it up. And then, a good deal. Very surprised to find this one for the price. Uh, walked into a shop again. Generally flat rating at 15. I think pawn shops are finally coming off that. I asked... Uh, how much are the games on the shelf? Guy said five bucks for PS4 games. Uh, most of it was just garbage, stuff you wouldn't, you know, necessarily want or already have. Aside from this, Mortal Kombat 11, uh, in a waterlog case, not exactly collector's edition, uh, collector's status. However, we're good to go in the game. Eleven bucks. I'm sorry, five bucks for Mortal Kombat 11. Am I gonna play it? No. This game will give me nightmares, but I simply couldn't pass it up for $5. And I have a feeling if you were in that situation, you probably would not either. Let's go uh, to our next one. We've got uh, a toy uh, deal. Did I even mention where we're at today? Does it even matter? We're outside the toy pit. It's a local toy store here in Indianapolis. We didn't go anywhere, mainly because... Uh, it's a great place to hang out. And frankly, I'm too busy for a freaking voyage. Who isn't the week before Christmas, right? But the toy pit, you know, I should give it a, I should give it some props. Look them up on the internet. You'll be shocked to see how many video uh, games they have in this joint. Uh, sometimes they have video games. They're finally at the point where they're pricing their video games pretty appropriately, but it's not their priority. So while Bismuth goes into this place... For toys, I tend to go for games. Whatever they have, slip into the cracks. Now we had some some uh, stuff to turn in, some toys that he and I both... I think I had some Street Sharks. No, what was it? What did I give him? Bakugan! Right, we had some Bakugans. Uh, these stupid little plastic Pokemon offshoot magnetic toys. Um... I found them for a few bucks in a uh, thrift store. I don't know how. He gets on these kicks out of nowhere. He'll just ask me, do you got any Bakugan? I'm like, yeah, here they are. I think he held on to them for two months. He lost interest. He's very, very flavor of the month like that. God bless him. I love that about him. Uh, I never know what he's going to get interested in next. But the interest generally fades quite quickly. And then it's time to turn it in for other stuff, which is exactly what happened here. Since he had brought some stuff uh, to clean out his place, and I had the Bakugan, and part of it was the Bakugan, he was going to let me in on the, on, on the credit cut. Okay? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what he got. He pro I think he got, like, some pops. That gives you an idea of the kind of stuff he's into. He, he had some pops, I think, maybe. Uh, do you know what pops are? Those little vinyl dolls that are all over the place made by Funko? I, on the other hand, started looking around for games... Um, video game stuff. I even uh, looked in the back. I found like WCW Wrestling and Zelda. Uh, I was thinking of trading in for that. They were looking at $15. They're going to give me $15 a credit. I thought grabbing Zelda was going to be too much. Uh, but it just seemed like there wasn't much else there. However, we got even further in the back. They got us all. We got all the way in the back where they. It's just. All stuff all over the floor that is most of it, 90% of it, is ready to, to get sold on eBay. It's all posted for eBay. Um, looking in, like, some tool shelf with a whole bunch of other rigmarole, we found this very exciting NES title. 
On the back here, it was uh, originally uh, brought to us by Parker's Video. Feel free to jot down that number. Tell him right, Captain Raz sent you. If you can tell it by the shape here and the color, this is not uh, you know your your average run of the mill Nintendo game. In fact, it's God forbid an unlicensed Nintendo game. Because some people are offended by that or something. I don't know. Anyway, looking at the back, uh, one would guess this is probably, if you know your NES, maybe Bible Adventures, right? Uh, no, it's actually not. This is the first Color Dreams game we ever, we've ever had uh, in the hold, I believe. And I think we did pretty good. It appears to be a shooter called Metal Fighter. Pretty hot stuff. I mean, as far as Color Dreams games go, if it's going to be a shooter, I mean, how hard is that to get right, right? So I was pretty excited to grab this guy. Again, Parker's video there. And what did the, what's the price they had on there? $23? That's too much. We only had 15 to work with, right? That's too much. But I figured we'd try and cut a deal. So I held on to this. I had WCW Wrestling in my hand as well. I'm relatively sure our WCW wrestling is broken, so I was going to grab that too. I figured both games, reasonable, we could talk them down to $15. But then he said, hey, by the way, uh, did you see the Intellivision lot? I'm like, no. So he brings me to the front of the store, which is arguably just as messy, and in a box on the floor, a whole rigmarole of Magnavox 2 boxed games. Which, frankly, isn't that unheard of to see. And an Intellivision lot. Now, the Intellivision, we, we have an Intellivision. We paid $5 on it a couple years back. Uh, any games we've picked up, we haven't spent more than a dollar on. So we're not invested in, you know, trying to pick up hard-to-find, expensive... We'll, we'll deal with hard-to-find, but expensive Intellivision games. But there was two things in here that I'd never seen before. And they kind of knocked my socks off. First of all, let's take a look at the Intellivision before I show you here. So the Intellivision, very sweet little system. I love the color. This is our system. Again, we got it for five bucks. It works. Uh, hey, you know what I forgot to do? Hey, let's get the Christmas lights going. Yeah, <laughs> I brought this guy all the way from home. It's my uh, my multi uh, lip bulb. <laughs> Forgot all about it. All right, here we go. Anyway, so uh, what are we doing here? Okay, yeah. So the big biggest uh, complaint about the the Intellivision is the controller itself. I'd say the biggest problem is the action buttons are on the side there. I mean, who wants to play? You know, like that. And then on top of it, you got to deal with the thumb? That's how you're playing? I mean, it's a nightmare. And from what I understand, I haven't played one of these in 30 years, so you'll have to forgive me. Uh, 25, who knows? Who's counting? Decades. Uh, the dial is, is, is terrible. It's the worst part of the system. Games are decent. Controls are terrible. So, when I saw these, I was like, this solves everything, right? Check it out. Got two of these. Oh boy. One for each controller, mind you. It's <laughs> the Point Master Quick Stick by Who in God's Name Knows. It's a joystick. <laughs> Is he? He's showing his age, isn't he? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, it's got a big suction cup there in the bottom, presumably for the dial, and a couple of uh, attachments there to sh to shove a slider into the, the the pad. So let's give this a shot. Never haven't done this before. Basically, pick this up and put it in the chest to, to show you guys. So let's see how this guy. Uh, see if it feels all right. Oh, God. Come on. 
Oh boy. Oh wait, maybe it just goes like this. Does it not slide on? It just fastens maybe? This would be easier if I wasn't holding the console too. Alright, there we go. Well, that's a snug fit. I, were we supposed to sick this, uh, lick the suction cup? That's not going to happen. But actually, that's not a bad snug fit. And even if this thing sucks, which presumably it does, man, it's got to be better than a dial, right? Right? It's kind of neat. And again, I can't, I can't speak for its quality. But uh, who doesn't want to pop that onto their television? Come on. There you go. Finally, you know, something to make it even harder to store. Great. So we had two of these. And Metal Fighter. I've never seen these things in my life. I, I pulled him out of the box. Well, he wasn't looking, of course. Hopefully thinking maybe he, he didn't put two and two together. Although they looked decidedly in television. And he did point the box out. So I assumed he, he saw them. But never seeing them before and knowing it i mean any any option to make the intelligent play better we got to go for right so we picked this up uh i said i put wcw down i regret that now i should have gone for all four but really what i was interested in was the stuff we didn't have uh a shooter for the nes and these weird things the what are they called again the point masters I said, can you do 15 for all three? I know you got 23 on this, but it's been sitting in a, in a toolbox. He's like, yeah, I think we can do that. So I think that was a pretty fair deal. Um, I'm very happy with grabbing the three things. And I'm actually looking forward to trying out Metal Fighter. I'll probably regret that. Let's put the old television back under the tree and continue. Oh, boy. Okay. It's a good thing that... Yeah, there goes Iron Man. All right. Oh boy. Okay. Uh, after we left the toy pit, we stopped at a disc replay. Um, these game stores, sometimes you get lucky and they will take in stuff, uh, systems that have carrying cases with them. Maybe they don't say Nintendo on them or something, so they just set them aside. We found the. I found these three. I had to literally say, "Hey, can I see those in the? Can you pull that bin of old cases out?" Uh, I happened to see the price on one, and I was like, "I gotta check the whole case." A lot of them were like five dollars, and nice. These three though seem very durable. Very good for like you know your spare Game Boy or something. Trust me, of which we have many, unprotected. Nothing particularly interesting about this. I believe this was for DS or 3DS. At least that was the design. Wow, you can actually fit... Jeez, 8, 16... Oh boy, here comes the math. 24, 32, 40... Whoa, 46, 52, 60 games. 60 games pop in this thing. Wow. That's crazy. And we got it we got all three of them for the shocking deal of 50 cents each. I think that's pretty killer. Very durable. You know, we can put Don't worry everybody. Tony Hawk motion is safe. Okay? Let's zip him up. Whew. All right. Very good. Yeah, we got three of those. All right, guys. I definitely saved the best for last. I found this on my own at a Goodwill. Uh, I had, I, I think it was one of those, uh, the day after one of those, uh, you ever been to Goodwill every month they have like a, the whole store is 50% off the first Saturday. Well, I believe we went the following Monday after one of those, or maybe it was like a holiday. I just remember my head being like, this whole place should be cleaned out. We must've got there like five minutes before they set this thing out. Check it out. In the toy section. We found a little Christmas toy. He's practically a nutcracker, isn't he? Look at this guy, huh? As you can see under his armpit here, we got him for a dollar ninety-nine. Okay. He's pretty sweet. 
But he's not just some run-of-the-mill, everyday, generic robot you would happen to find in a thrift store for a uh, dollar store for four or five dollars. No, this guy actually has some age, and he actually has some notoriety. If you look on his chest very closely, GoBots. It's a GoBot. And it's easily the largest GoBot I've ever seen. But here's the thing, guys. Here's the shocker. If you know anything about GoBots, they were the competing line with Transformers. And I believe Transformers are well known enough to know that at least the gimmick with Transformers, and GoBots for that matter, is that they are robots that transport, transform into other items, generally vehicles, but some of them transform into different things. Now I found this guy in his transformed form. I put him in robot form for you guys for the season, but gee, wouldn't I be remiss if I didn't transform him for you and show you what our friend turns into. Are you ready for this? All right, we gotta twist the head first. Okay, twisting the head there. We extend his arms. See where I'm going with this? His little chest plate pulls out. And finally, his legs, actually I believe I have to put his legs together first. His legs come together and then are locked in there we go. That's a boy. And the creme de la creme. It's got a stock that it stands. <laughs> it's a go by gun, ladies and gentlemen. How exciting. How exciting this little piece is. I don't know if there's a lock on this or what. Maybe I have to... Well, I couldn't play. It seems like the. This is the first time I've ever really played with this, so you'll forgive me if I'm not. He's not transforming a. There we go. There's the lock. Oh yeah, she's getting locked in now. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha, Goodwill. Here's the thing, so though. What if I told you that? Regarding this toy, this GoBot, you ain't seen nothing yet. Check it out. You see here, in the top, it's a little yellow, very easy to see trigger. You guys ready to load it? <sighs> it's a freaking cap gun it loads and fires caps presumably I'm pretty sure it hasn't done that in 25 years unfortunately hey no ammo well thanks for coming farewell and adieu to ye fair spent what can't stop now can we what do you say we load her yeah, let's load her up. Come on. You guys didn't think I'd leave you hanging like that, did you? Opening it up. I have no idea if this thing's going to work. I don't even know how this thing loads. Wow, we sure got a lot of ammo, though. A lot of rings here. That's like many shots. Many shots. Let's do this. All right, let's open her up. Okay. Oh, I hope this works. I don't even know if I'm putting these in right. Let's see. It looks like it's going to go in like that. Does that look right to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, guys, look at that. Like a glove. Oh, okay. Okay. Because this is Christmas. And 
What have you done? Another year older. Corn has just begun. Ugh. Oh, still, still not getting the lock correct. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready for this? Get your head down. This, I can actually see through his head as a sight. Right there. Oh. Yeah, all right, here we go. Oh. Yeah, let's try again. Oh! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, the smell of sulfur is in the air. Oh my god, it's smoking. Can you see the smoke? I think we ran out. Or it's not working right. There's two triggers. One for each side. So I presumably got like, what is that? 12 shots? 16 shots? Oh, it smells great, guys. It smells like Christmas in here. Oh, God. I wish you could be a part of that. Well. Well, we got our gun. <laughs> what do you say we play? Our tasteless game once again for the holidays. Hooters Road Trip. I'm been, I'm so happy to have shared that with you. Let's get back to it, huh? Hooters Road Trip for the PlayStation One. Oh boy! Wow. Oh yeah, I know what I'm bringing home for Christmas. Mom's gonna love it. All right. Can I get my headphones in here? Oh, oh, a load time? Oh no, I don't want to see another load time. Not in this game. Please, no, don't remind me that I got second place. Oh, what? No, no attractive load time? All right, guys, we're, we're getting first place this time, okay? Where is this? Welcome to Jacksonville. Did I give you guys audio? All right, we're good. Oh, get out of my way, sir. I'm driving home for Chris. I'm coming, Ma! And where do you meet the girl? Where do you see the girl I met? Ugh. Mom, I know she's not much for words, but wait till you try her, her boneless buffalo wings. Fifth position. Come on, baby. Come on. We got we got to get first here. Ah! It's Christmas. Everything has to come out right, right? Maybe if I drove on the right side of... Okay, what is this? Left side of the road? Is that right? I swear if I was actually driving in the car, I'd know that. Oh, nice covered bridge. Jack I never knew Jacksonville looked so nice in December. Wow. You know, this is great, but can we get some carols on? Whoa! Oh, did you see that spin out? Wow, serious driving. Oh, by the way, no analog support. It's all D-pad here. What did we get, uh, Hoosiers Road Trip for? Three dollars. Uh, if you pay more than that... Oh my god! You're crazy! But I'll tell you what. Oh, we're our, we're in second. We're close, guys. Come on. Come on. We gotta make this. If you find it for three... Look. I recommend it. I don't want to tell you. Why? It, because it's a good game? Because, uh, it's gonna up your collector status? No. It's just... This is... This is the essence of fun, you know, in games here. Just dumb, lots of laughs, uh, you know, a cash grab from a long, a time long forgotten. Whoa, 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 whoa. That if you have a sense of humor and a twinkle in your eye, you can do nothing but appreciate. You know, plus there's, uh, booty shorts. Come on. How far away is this guy? This guy's all the way to Alabama by now. Come on, sweetheart. We gotta win this one. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, he's up there. I see him. He's quick. He's fast, man. I don't know if we're gonna make this. Tragic. Come on, come on, come on. Push it. Come on, push Oh, yeah, he crashed! 
Oh! Oh! Get out of my way! Please! I've got Christmas on my side, gosh darn it! Oh my god. Come on. I can smell the wings now. Please. You know what I like about Hooters? Um. <laughs> aside from the obvious, I really like the motif. Go, 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 go! Go, go, go! It's all plywood. Everywhere wood. We made it! First place! Second? I thought we got first! Do they not know how to count? Alright. Thank you. Look at we got the Rendon. Woo! Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Mrs. Claus, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give her in. Hey, welcome to Atlanta! Alright. We're done. Man, oh man, a Shevitz. I forgot to get, forgot to get what I needed for this mailbag question. Guys, we gotta wrap it up here pretty soon. <laughs> Everybody see my hat? All right, here we go. Uh, let, okay, hold on. I, I do need something here. Give me one second. It's always nice to have a visual aid when you can, and uh, I remember I had this thing pulled out, but it wasn't ready to go. So thank you very much for your patience. Uh, now, if you're new to the show, we always like to wrap the hour. Like those old variety shows of old, Bozo, God rest his soul, Svengoolie, still kicking up there in Chicago land, showing old movies, and of course... Those masters of mirth, Mystery Science Theater 3000. Those shows of yore always took the time at some point during the program to give it over to the audience because they knew that was important. And in those days, there weren't things like electronic mailing systems. In those days, viewers had to care enough to write it down on a piece of paper, slap a stamp on it, and send it away only in the hopes of getting an answer. Here on the Galleon, I always like to try and keep that time honored tradition alive. So while we do tend to get our questions from whispers over Twitch, comments on YouTube, or our, our Gmail, gaminggalleon at gmail.com, or through our official website, thegaminggalleon.live. While we do get all the questions from there, I think it would be uh, a shame if I didn't go that extra step and write it down on paper for you guys, pull it out of the old bag. Let's do that, all right? The old bag that tells no tales. Do we got a question? I sure hope so. Oh yeah, we do. This one comes from an old dear matey, longtime supporter of the show, great guy out in the East Coast, our buddy, Zadrian, and he has one simple, short, but poignant question that I think plays into the innocence of today's program. What's your favorite cute em up, Raz? It's not a cute em up! They're shooters, okay? He's asked me this before. Uh, it's a hard question. There's a lot of them out there. I really, uh, I really love the genre. I have to say, I do tend to, to gravitate toward the, the more again gritty environments, space shooters, you know, guys with uh, guns and uh, you know riding around in jeeps and tanks and helicopters, more militaristic stuff. Okay, but hey, look, you can't deny the genre in in any uh, in any uh, veneer. And that includes more cartoony 
and innocent looking games like cute em ups as for me uh i have to say fantasy zone man i mean i don't know if that's cliche could be we got fantasy zone 2 here for the master system you play this adorable looking ship with uh wings the wings of an angel and believe it or not uh, a pair of shoes and you can actually land on the ground and walk around instead of flying all the time. It's adorable. It's almost sickeningly so. The music, uh, under the wrong circumstances, may drive you bat loony, but I would say for the most part it's pretty serviceable. And uh, the game itself is hard as nails and uh, pretty exciting. There's a uh, currency system. Always nice to get a little, you know, reward for every monster you kill. You're not just flying through. There's a shop where you can decide on a, an art, arsenal of uh, different weapons and maneuverability enhancements. I'd say my main complaint with the Fantasy Zone series is the power-ups are, are limited time. I wish they were maybe like, you know, limited ammo or even better. You kept them until you died like most uh, games of this genre. But uh, very fun. Available in the arcades on many different systems and I believe it's even been featured in a Yakuza as a mini game. So there you are Jadrian. And by the way he doesn't care if I like cute em ups. He knows that term just winds me up. I know what you're doing out there Jadrian and I'm watching. Anyway it's Christmas. Uh, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. It's time we wrap this up much like the presents that are sitting in our cars and in the closets of our bedrooms. Christmas is coming. And before I say goodbye and see you in the new year, I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa. Are there any others? I just hope wherever you're going to be next week, whether you're celebrating or not, you have someone to spend it with. Whether it be someone in the room or someone far, far away. Maybe even on a pirate ship. Until next time, my friends. I'll wanna do to ye fair Spanish maidens. I wanna do ye. Sorry, we haven't cleaned up since the Christmas party. Ye ladies of Spain, heartily receive daughters, for to have a very merry Christmas. And lo, nevermore shall we see ye again. Keep your powder dry, ladies. <laughs>